Right, uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this, the 29th meeting in 2014 of the Economy, Energy and Tourism Committee. Can I uh, welcome members, uh, welcome uh, the Minister of Witnesses, who I'll come to in a moment. And I can remind everyone, please, to turn off or at least turn to silent all mobile phones and other electronic uh, devices. Now, we have uh, some changes on the committee. So, uh, first of all, I would like to pay tribute to the members who have uh, departed uh, on to higher things in some cases. I'd like to congratulate uh, Marco Biaggi on his appointment to government and uh, thank him and the other members, Alison Johnson and Mike McKenzie, for their contribution to the committee over uh, previous years. And I'd like to welcome three new members. Uh, welcome or welcome back, Patrick Harvey, and welcome Gordon MacDonald and Richard Lyle to the committee. Uh, looking forward to working with you all. Um, item uh, two on the agenda. I would ask uh, the new members if they would declare any relevant interests. Uh, start with uh, Patrick Harvey. Uh, thank you, convener. Nothing additional to the interests that I declared uh, at the beginning of the current session of Parliament when I was previously a member of the committee. I'm a member of several organisations which are likely to give evidence to uh, the committee or which have an interest in energy and economy policy, including Friends of the Earth, Oxfam and the Poverty Alliance. Uh, I'm also a director of a a uh, company with charitable status, Gala Scotland Limited, which runs the Glasgow Arts Festival. It's an unremunerated post, uh, but the organisation applies for small, I would say pitifully small, grants which uh, have a relationship to tourism policy. Thank you. Um, Gordon. Thanks, Convener. I've got no declarable interest. Uh, however, I would like to say that I'm a member of the National Trust for Scotland and Historic Scotland. Okay. Thank you. And Richard. Uh, thank you, Convener. I refer members to my register of interests. I also wish to record, whilst I believe there is no need to do so, that my son holds a, a senior position in a major investment bank involved in the oil and gas sector in Aberdeen. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Right, item uh, three on the agenda. Are uh, members uh, content that we take item seven uh, in private? Yes. Yep. Okay, that is agreed. Uh, item four, um, subordinate legislation. Uh, we have to consider the uh, Scottish Regulators Strategic Code of Practice, SG 2014-236. I'd like to welcome the Minister. Uh, new title, Minister for Business, Energy and Tourism, Fergus Young. New title, same face. Uh, joined this morning by Joe Brown, Head of Better Regulation and Industry Engagement, uh, and Sandra Reid, Better Regulation Policy Advisor at Scottish Government. Uh, welcome to you all. Uh, Minister, do you want to uh, introduce the uh, uh, Code of Practice? Yes, thank you, Convener, for the opportunity to speak to the Committee today about the Scottish Regulator's Strategic Code of Practice. As the Committee is aware, provisions for the Code come from the Regulatory Reform Scotland Act, which seeks to deliver proportionate and consistent regulation and promote in all regulators a broad and deep alignment with the Government's central purpose of increasing sustainable economic growth. A strong economy is essential to our success and we must provide the environment that allows business to succeed. The Scottish Regulator's Strategic Code of Practice, which has been laid before the Scottish Parliament, sets out a high-level strategic approach to encourage and support regulators in applying regulatory principles and building good practice in order to contribute to achieving sustainable economic growth while concurrently delivering other core functions. Underpinning the duty for regulators to contribute to achieving sustainable economic growth, the Code will provide clear line of sight between regulatory activity and the Scottish Government's purpose. It will also provide greater transparency, which is essential if we are to have consistency of delivery across all regulators. The Code was developed with and by regulators and business, and I acknowledge and value the contribution from members of the short-term working group. The draft code was subject to consultation to seek to ensure that it meets the requirements and expectations of the regulator and the regulated. It builds on existing good practice and it seeks to support an enabling approach to drive further performance improvements. It's important to recognise this when considering the, the uh, uh, DPLR committee's specific comments in paragraph 9, which, uh, convener, I will come to shortly, as I've indicated to the committee informally earlier this morning. The Code provides greater clarity to regulators as to what is expected of them and to business of what they can expect from regulators. In recognition of concerns raised during Stage 1 scrutiny of the Regulatory Reform Bill, the Code in includes the Scottish Government's definition of sustainable economic growth. 
The approach set out in the Code requires regulators to take a risk-based enabling approach to communicate clearly and effectively and to understand who they regulate. Given the wide range of regulators and regulatory activity covered by the Code, it is purposely set at a strategic level. The Code should be underpinned by regulator-specific guidance through which each regulator will provide greater detail required by their staff and stakeholders to reflect their own circumstances. However, having noted the concerns raised by the DPLR Committee regarding the wording in paragraph 9, I am minded to take the views of Parliament fully into account. I will revisit this section of the Code with the working group which helped develop it. There is no need for a further consulta formal consultation, and as such, convener, I would expect to come back with a revised form of wording relatively early <coughs> in the new year. Delivering better regulation by carrying out regulatory functions in transparent, proportionate, accountable, consistent and targeted way, alongside the duty to contribute to sustainable economic growth, will play an important role in making Scotland a more successful country and providing a favourable business environment in which companies can glow, grow and flourish. This code builds on our existing better regulation toolkit to deliver better and effective regulation and make Scotland a leading country in Europe in terms of better regulation and an attractive destination for business. So, to conclude, convener, I withdraw the motion, but I'm happy to answer any questions that the committee has at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Members, have any questions they want to ask in relation to this? Could I, I maybe uh, ask Minister about the um, comments we, we received as committee from the Scottish Council for Development and Industry? Um, I don't know if you've seen their, their, their submission to the committee, but th they've raised some concerns uh, around uh, innovation uh, and specifically whether enough emphasis is being put on the need for regulators to work with individual businesses or organisations in order to help innovative and beneficial technologies and processes uh, comply. And they're concerned that opportunities might be missed because of simple unfamiliarity with what might be you know, new and innovative uh, products or procedures. Is that something you're able to, to, to look at when you take the, uh, the, the code back? Well, yes, I'm, I'm very happy to do that at your specific request, uh, convener. Uh, I've got the submission in front of me now. Uh, I think it's fair to say it's couched in, in you know, high-level general uh, terms. It doesn't seem to give specific examples of areas of innovation which have hitherto not been the subject of adequate uh, proper consideration and I think to be fair to the regulators uh, I would say that at present we expect that they, they generally behave in the way that we wish them to behave when the code does come into place and the uh, act is being therefore respected at present uh, and we work with regulators rather than uh, in conflict with regulators and that many of them are working extremely closely with us in areas of innovation such as uh, renewable energy for example uh, to achieve the government's objectives there. But I will, at your request, uh, take that point specifically away uh, and uh, revert to you when we bring back the revised code early in the new year. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other members wish to raise something? Yes, uh, uh, yes Dennis. Okay. Uh, uh, good morning, Minister. It's, um, I, mean, I, I note that you said there's no need for further consultation. I accept that. Um, are you content that with the time frame that you have available to you um, to go back with the working group and then to come back to the committee in the early part of the new year? Um, well, I'm reasonably confident that that should be the case. The, those on the working group include SEPA, SNH, local authorities, the FSA, Healthcare Improvement Scotland, Social Care and Social Work Improvement Scotland, the Scottish Charity Regulator, the Fire and Rescue Service, the Housing Regulator, the Accountant of Bankruptcy and Visit Scotland. So it's quite a comprehensive group of stakeholders. Uh, we will see what they have to say plainly. Uh, but given the um, uh, Delegated Powers Committee has focused, I think, really on one specific aspect of this, I think the, the focus will be narrow in scope uh, and therefore we would hope to revert early in the new year on these matters. Thank you. Okay. Chair Martin. Yes, good morning, uh, Minister. I was going to raise the, the, the issue about SCDI as well in terms of individual businesses, but of course uh, that has been preempted. Can I just an observation? This is a circumstance which shows, despite what others may say, that the committee works uh, as does 
its relationship with ministers. And seeing this today is an indicator of just exactly how the DL, DLP has worked, we will work, uh, and the ministers work. I think everybody should recognise that with that willingness, you know, the committee system uh, working with the appropriate ministers is very effective, and we should recognise that. I'm not sure if that's a question for you, Minister, or just a No, it was a, a question, it's an observation. Um, well, I'm happy to agree with what Mr Brodie has said, and uh, we, we do and have listened very carefully to the, um, to the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee's 67th Report, Session 4, and paragraphs 12 and 13 in particular, and it was as a direct result of their making this one narrow, specific criticism that I felt the correct thing to do was rather than fire ahead, regardless of what Parliament has said, to go away, to give further thought to it carefully with the relevant stakeholders, which encompass a very wide range of Scottish society, and then to come back to the committee after having thought it through. The amount of time involved is uh, relatively modest, but the uh, value of the committee's contribution, as Mr Brodie says, is substantial. Thank you. Okay, if there are no other uh, questions members have, that will conclude item uh, four on the agenda. Uh, and, Minister, as you previously indicated uh, on item five, you do not therefore intend to move the motion in your name. Uh, that therefore concludes item five, and we'll move to item six, and I'll suspend just for a moment to allow a changeover of officials. Can uh, reconvene um, item six on the agenda. We have a uh, legislative consent motion in relation to the infrastructure bill, uh, UK Parliament legislation. This is LCM S434.1. Uh, and joining the minister, we have uh, Joyce Whittock, who's heat policy manager, and Suzanne Lemire, who is head of heat policy at the Scottish Government. Uh, welcome to you uh, both. Uh, minister, do you want to um, introduce this uh, item? Um, well, I, I haven't got a, a formal opening statement to uh, convener, but I can say, uh, ha having prepared for the um, committee today, that the amendments to the infrastructure bill uh, were added to the UK bill uh, in the House of Lords, tabled on the 29th of October, and these will basically allow four things, which I can briefly summarise for the committee, and then answer questions, probably with the assistance of my officials. Firstly, to enable the appointment of an alternative administrator to deliver the renewable heat incentive, along with the introduction of a new appeal mechanism. Secondly, the assignment of payments made under the RHI to a third party nominated by the owner of the renewable heat plant. Thirdly, to allow for some elements of existing secondary legislation to be changed using the negative resolution procedure. Fourthly, other minor, minor technical changes necessary for the administration and delivery of the requirements under the RHI scheme. The Scottish Government is satisfied that there is merit in each of these four measures, uh, and therefore, because that is the case, we believe that the LCM is, uh, is required and is appropriate. Thank you, Minister. Um, members wish to ask uh, questions on this? Mr Brody? Yes, I don't know. If I may, it won't necessarily affect the... The LCM, but just looking at the the proposals which uh, are under the RHI, in terms of first of all an alternative administrator uh, of the RHI, uh, along with the introduction of a new appeal mechanism, uh, the appeal mechanism is still to be controlled by Ofgem, and yet we are likely to have an alternative uh, administrator. In the consideration of this, or do you believe that in the consideration of this, they've looked at the actual? A possible conflict that might arise uh, between the new administrator uh, and uh, and of Gem as the uh, as the appeal forum. Um, well, we don't think so. We we believe that the new appeals mechanism will operate irrespective of any change that may be made to the uh, administrator, and will also allow the flexibility to modify those appeal processes currently managed by of Gem. Are there any other questions from members? No. Uh, if not, can I ask members, uh, are we uh, content to recommend to Parliament that it gives its consent 
to the relevant provisions of the Infrastructure Bill as set out in the LCM. Yeah, yeah. We are agreed. Uh, and are members content to delegate to the convener and clerk the production of a short factual report detailing the committee's considerations and arranging for its publication. Yeah, agreed. agreed. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Minister, to you and your officials for coming along, and we'll have a very short suspension and go into private session. <laughs>